female panel today, please welcome from Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Melissa Joan Hart and Jenna Lee Green. Yes, the nostalgia is running wild. Give it up for our beautiful panel today with our Charlie's Angels moment that we have here. Very excited to have some females on the panels today. First of all, ladies, how are you doing and how are you enjoying Wales thus far? I love Wales. My, my kids are actually jealous that I'm here because I was here in like, I think it was like 2017, I spent six weeks in Cardiff and uh, I brought my kids for the first two weeks and they think that I'm doing all the fun things they did back then. There was a, um, I don't know if it's still on Roald Dahl Plus, is, um, the, there was like a street fair, is that still going on? Because they think that, they're like, well, I got to go there and the water park and do all those things. So they want their Welsh cakes. Yes. But I'll just bring some back. Yes. They think you're just living it up. They do. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually um, my very first time. Whoa. <laughs> this is my very first time in Wales. Oh, wow. And it is beautiful. We haven't had um, a ton of time to explore, but yesterday we did wander around a little bit. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful area. Yeah. Wait. Is, my, is it? So you actually... It's called, you guys say Camry, right? Is that right? Camry? Camry. Camry. Am I saying that right? No? Camry Cam instead of what? Yeah. Instead of Wales. Oh. I mean, like, but Camry is like the Welsh Wales, right? Okay, good. Yes. Like how and I, my favorite word is kutch. So. Does that mean something naughty? Which no. she did teach me yesterday. It should mean something naughty. It sounds oh, it's like it hug. Does. It means hug. Oh, it means hug. Okay, I don't know why my mind went to a dark place. It's been a long day, ladies and gentlemen. Well, tell us about the fan interaction so far, because I was just saying to the gentleman backstage that I grew up watching Clarissa Explains It All, and of course, give it up for Clarissa Explains It All, by the way. Sam, uh, but I grew up watching you in Clarissa, and of course, Sabrina the Teenage Witch meant a lot to me when I was growing up, but it's got to be wild that it's, it spans the globe, and the fans in Wales are so excited to see you, so tell me about the fan interactions you've had today. Everybody's been lovely. Um, I, always, um, I always laugh a little bit because I, I feel like a lot of times people come up to us and, and they're, they might be a bit shy or reserved and, and feel like they're embarrassed to talk and I just kind of want to say back, we feel the same way. Like, we're, we get a little, you know, we, we may be a tad bit more outgoing, but we all feel it. It's, you know, interactions with people you don't know are always a bit awkward and, and strange, so just walk on up, say hello. We won't bite. Yeah, and, and it's always quick, right? So, like, on both sides, you're trying to make an impression, and, like, you know, it's, it's such a quick interaction that sometimes you get flustered and you say the wrong thing, and, you know, someone will say, like, welcome to Wales, and I'll be like, you too. Oh, I, I, um. <laughs> People probably just think I'm going to be mean. <laughs> it does happen, though, and it's even when people, uh, which, by the way, as they just mentioned, politely, please don't be shy. We're going to have you come up to the microphone on the left and the right to ask your questions in a bit. So this is the opportunity to come up with the questions. Don't be shy. Uh, but sometimes people even, uh, you know, forget their question when we're doing Comic-Cons like this. But question for you, ladies. Have you ever been so starstruck that you acted in that way where maybe you forgot the question or you met yeah. somebody and thought, oh, my God, this is my, my fan moment. I was at a dinner party that I thought was just something I wanted to get out of and go see my boyfriend when we first started Sabrina. And I didn't realize it was the president of Viacom. And, um, and so all these, like Sharon Stone was there and all these people, and I found out John Travolta was there. And when I was a little girl, I watched Grease over and over and over again. And my first, like, three boyfriends looked like Danny Zuko. And so he was there, and I was sitting next to Henry Winkler, who later on directed our show, directed Sabrina, the Fonz. Yeah. And Henry saw me kind of spaz out about, I said, John, John Travolta's here? He's like, yeah, you want to meet him? Come on. And I was like, not prepared. And I walked up to him, and uh, long story short, I said something ridiculous that didn't make any sense, and he corrected me. And I was like, no, 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 I knew. I know, I didn't mean that. That's not what I meant to say. Hi, Kelly, nice to meet you. I got to go. And I, like, Hi. ran away. And I guess, like on a red carpet or something, someone asked him about that, and he went, yeah, I remember that girl. <laughs> oh, no. It was weird. But then I was at a Comic-Con a few years ago, and I was in a green room area where they hold everybody, and John Travolta walked in one curtain, and Carrie Elwes from Princess Bride walked in the other, and my 15-year-old self, like, vomited, puked, passed out. Like, I was like, I, they were both coming at me, too. I was like, wait, hold on, wait. <laughs> Hold on, the man in black and Danny Zuko are in this tent with me right now. And I freaked out, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I feel like I put my foot in my mouth all the time, celebrity or not. I, I tend to say things that 
are not what I wanted to say. <laughs> oh, like that. <laughs> um, but probably I would say the most nervous I was, well, two separate occasions, both having to do with, with jobs that I was fortunate enough to have, but the first one was a couple years ago. I worked with Russell Crowe on a, a miniseries for Showtime, and I was so nervous. I didn't know what to say. I didn't, I didn't know if I should introduce myself, which of course I should. I was, you know, in the project with him. But I just probably spent the first couple days on set just <laughs> doing that and not really, until finally he said to me, would you like to tell me your name? <laughs> I was like, hi, I'm Jenna. It's really nice to meet you. He says, well, I've met you. <laughs> so he, he ended up being lovely, lovely. And then the same thing happened Last year, I did a movie with John Malkovich, and it's the same thing. And let me just tell you, that is the nicest man I've ever met in my life. And then it turned into us sitting in this van in the middle of COVID and winter, freezing for hours, and he would just tell me story after story. And I didn't actually even understand a lot of what he was saying, because he would tell these long stories about living in France, and he and his wife have a vineyard, and this and that. And I, I, I don't think I heard half of it, because I just was like... What an actor, amazing actor. Yeah, he's the best. Speaking of Carrie Elways, no, he's not here. We're not going to bring like, him out what? and scare you. No, I would die as well. Uh, on the car ride, we were talking about Stranger Things. Oh, yeah. So uh, obviously, we'd love to ask you guys what you're watching. But before we get to that, because we mentioned Stranger Things, it's funny to me that people think of Carrie Elways from Stranger Things, but not really realizing that he's an 80s star, and that's the whole nostalgia. So did you see him in Stranger Things, and was that like a hilarious moment? I actually moment? did my nine-year-old. So I loved the first season of Stranger Things. The second season lost me, even though I did do a TV show with Sean Astin, and I knew that he, spoiler alert, dies in the second season or something, but we were working together, and I watched a few episodes, and I don't know if I was uncomfortable with Sean and Winona's relationship in that. I was feeling a little jealous, maybe, but... Um, I don't know, it just felt a little, it, it was slow to me, and I, so I never went back to it, but my nine-year-old's obsessed, and the, the day the fourth season dropped, and then the second part of season four, we were on vacation, and he had, we had to download it that minute, we had to get to Wi-Fi, and download it, because we were out of the country, and, uh, and so he's watched it numerous times, and he's like, are you going to watch it with me? So I started watching the third season with him, so now, and then I just started the fourth season, so... Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool to see him in that role. It's funny because we were talking about, it, was it this morning, I guess, or yesterday, that like Stranger Things doesn't really use a lot of familiar faces. What I like is they kind of make stars instead of using familiar stars, um, like, you know, Millie Bobby Brown and so many people, like, I mean, Eddie and, and uh, Steve, all these actors that have come out of this. Um, uh, uh, Billy is in Elvis movie, yes, right? Yes, quick, uh, quick plug. Billy will be in Manchester with Monopoly events this December. For the love of sci-fi, quick plug. Doc oh, Ray Montgomery is his name. I will be there. Billy, yeah. who looks exactly like Rob Lowe. I don't know how many people out here know who Rob, Rob Lowe is. Yes. You should, but he looks exactly like Rob I Lowe. I see it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I bought a Hellfire shirt yesterday at Sin City Comics for my son. So. Yeah. His birthday's coming up. I'm getting him some Funko dolls and stuff from Stranger Things. So it was, yeah, I, but I've only seen the first episode of season four, so don't give me spoilers if you come to my table. <laughs> yeah, please no spoilers. You're watching it as well? I just finished it. I just finished Ooh. season four. Yeah. Um, it's pretty good. This season is, is fantastic. It, it, much, if, it, if it could be darker, it's even darker. Yeah. So the tie-in, though, to Sabrina, which is funny, is that like we had some stellar people work on our show, and they've gone off to do Game of Thrones and, and uh, American Horror Story. So our makeup artist, Erin Kruger McCash, um, she, she did our show. She had done a show called Alien Nation, which I think is why my mother, who was the executive producer of our show, hired her because she loved Alien Nation. And then she went on to do all of Ryan Murphy's stuff, like Glee and American Horror Story. And her husband, she married into a famous prosthetics family, and, and her husband, Mike McCash, created Vecna. So Vecna is like his creation. So um, he was, he's the one who, eight hours a day, dressed the actor as Vecna. Wow. It's like six degrees of Sabrina right? instead of six degrees of Kevin well, Bacon. And, our, and, our, <laughs> and our, um, our special effects guy, Steve Colback, you'll see his name in the very cr front credits of Game of Thrones because he does basically, I think, all the special effects except the dragons. So basically, everyone got their start on Sabrina. <laughs> we just have Sabrina to people. thank for that. Yeah. Well, we had a lot of special effects. It was really complicated. It was a really difficult show to do. We had what was called a hybrid show, and probably one of the first. Um, we mimicked it, actually, off of the Clarissa Explains It All schedule, which was two days of rehearsal, three days of shooting. Most sitcoms shoot 
um, a live show on a Friday night. People always think that the show was filmed live, and when I tell them that it wasn't, they're like, what? It couldn't have, because of the cat, because of the special effects, because we had short scenes, that's more of a single camera show. Like, I don't know if you guys watch like Young Sheldon or the Goldbergs, shows like that that are single camera, like, like The Office and stuff like that that are single camera. But the multicams have numerous cameras and usually shoot really quickly, but you rehearse all week. Yeah. You rehearse all week and then you do a live taping usually on a Friday night. And yeah. people think that that's how our show was shot, but it was we not. Could, there's no way with the special effects we could have. So it was really complicated. Actually, I really started directing because it was so hard to find directors that understood the way we did things. Before we get to you guys, please go ahead and uh, get to the microphones on the left and right to ask your questions, please. Before we get to that, Jenna, I would love to hear more about your theater background because I was lightly stalking you on the interwebs. And uh, it was so cool to see all of your, your theater credits and amazing things that you've done, you know, in and off Broadway. Very cool. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I grew up, I was a very, very shy child. I'm a twin. My sister was much more outgoing than I was. And when I was pretty young, I would say... Um, 10 or 11, my mom found this um, theater program in the summer and thought that that might help me to kind of break out of my shell a little bit. And little did she know I would develop such a passion for it. So I, I didn't even know that I could sing until I was probably 12 or 13. So I wasn't doing Annie. But I just loved it so much. And I kind of I did Annie. Yeah. <laughs> and my high school play, but I can't sing. So I didn't play <laughs> Annie. I just played the uh, what's her name, Duffy or something like that. One of them, yeah. <laughs> but I, I just, so that, that was it. From that time on, I just, it was musical theater all day, every day, in school, out of school, and I really kind of thought I would graduate high school, I would go to college for musical theater, and I would move to New York City and be on Broadway, and then other things kind of happened, and I developed this love of, of television and film that I didn't know I had. So I've always kind of gone back and forth. After Sabrina ended, I got involved in this rock opera musical production in Los Angeles that ended up bringing me to New York, and I did the show off-Broadway there, and then I ended up doing uh, Wicked on Broadway, national tour in Los Angeles. And so now I really feel lucky because I go back and forth. I still do tons of television and film, but I live in New York City, and I have... Um, theater and workshops, a lot of people don't know, but, but every Broadway show starts with these small little readings and workshops. And Melissa's done Broadway shows as well, even plays. On singing ones. <laughs> <laughs> even plays though, it starts off in one small room with a group of actors sitting around in a circle reading the script, and then it develops from there. So shows take years and years to finally make it to the point where everyone can come and see them. So I love living in New York and having that available to me but I actually haven't done a play in quite a few years now, so I'm kind of itching. We'll see. Stay tuned. It's very cool you can transition between both, though. And Alyssa, you and I talked in uh, Liverpool about kind of how young you started, but how young did you start? Like, what age? And was it something that you immediately just took to like a duck to water, or was it kind of a... Yeah, I, <laughs> I was four years old, and I wanted to be on a show. Did you guys ever have a show called Romper Room? It was... <laughs> I don't even know what the show was. It was a woman, Miss Marianne, and her class. And like, I just remember, I think it maybe was a variety show or something. All I know is I love Romper Room. And at the end, she'd talk into her magic mirror and she'd say who she saw. And she'd that's say, the one that I, I see, Melissa. I yeah. see. So, yeah. And she would never say Melissa because it wasn't a popular name back then. And so it still isn't. But she would, um, she would uh, say everyone's name. And I realized that the only way for me to have her say my name was if I was on the show. So I told my mom, I have to get on TV. And she said, I actually know someone who could do that. Like, uh, she knew an, a kid who was in the business, so she got the agent. And I went on my first audition, and I booked it. And it was a bathtub doll called Splashy. And uh, I remember I was embarrassed because I had to be naked in the bathtub. Well, <laughs> naked. But, like, I, had, I was, like, really embarrassed that I had to be in this bathtub with this doll. And, uh, and then, but I, I got my first job, my third job, my fifth job. Like, I kept getting all the, all the auditions that I went on, and... Um, and I was loving it, and it was it started to make us money for the first time. Like my mom thought she had to pay for me to be on it. She didn't realize that I was gonna get paid, and uh, and I just took to it really quickly. Did a lot of theater. Um, lived in New York, so theater was easy. Soap operas, um, Saturday Night Live. I was on three times. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, didn't know that either. When you were a kid, is yeah. this a Comic Con exclusive right here? Oh, maybe. My goodness. It, maybe if you, who, some of you have read my book, right? I oh, wait, I read your book. I, yeah, thanks. 
It's Jenna. Whatever. I read the book. I didn't read the book. It's fine. Um, but yeah, no. So I did, I think it's in there, but I did Saturday Night Live three times, two taped episodes because we were kids. So they shot our scenes separately. I did one with Billy Crystal and one with, oh my gosh, the guy from Jaws, Roy Scheider. Is that a name? Yeah. yeah. And then I did one live. So I got, and it was Billy Ocean was the uh, singer that night. And he told me backstage that he was going to dedicate Caribbean Queen to me. And then he went on the show and he didn't say my name. And I was like, well, that sucks. He totally lied. I would have peed myself. Not realizing that nobody actually says names when they go on stage to perform on Saturday Night Live. But um, I was so des I was like, oh, he lied to me. But now I realize maybe he was actually thinking about me. I don't know. I think he was. There was, <laughs> there was one skit, the one I did live was called Santa the Terminator. So Terminator was a big movie at the time. And it was um, um, Jim Belushi came down the chimney, blew up the whole house, like just shot up like Terminator, shot up all my toys and I'm hiding behind the couch watching him like, but actually because of that job, I got to take home a Barbie dream house because they didn't blow up the Barbie dream house. And I, they were like, would you like this? I was like, <laughs> are you kidding? Worth it. Can I take the dream house home? Thank you. <laughs> okay, I have to look that up on YouTube, which is funny because SNL um, doesn't always translate over here. The humor is very, very kind of American. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Saturday Night, did I say Saturday Night Live, SNL? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. yeah. We have some questions from some very excited people here in Wales. Let's go to microphone, uh, this one over here on the right. How are you? Hi, even as a 06 baby, I've watched every episode of Sabrina. Yeah. And I do have to ask you, how was acting with a cat that couldn't talk back? <laughs> <laughs> well, when the cat's talking, it tends to be the animatronic. And our friend Nick, who voiced the cat, was one of our writers. So for the first like four years, he was on the set. So it was fun to have him on set and improving, especially when it was the live cat, and the live cat would do things like, there's some bloopers where Salem's walking across the table. He's supposed to be sitting still, but he got up and walked across the table, and there were some deviled eggs, and he's sniffing at them, and so Nick would go, mm, eggs, and like just do weird. <laughs> that was one of my, I don't know why that one tickles me, but like. You know, even with, it, even with trained animals, you never know. You're going to yeah. get what you're going to get, and so sometimes you just roll with it. But it was, the cat was always, no offense, it was one of my favorite co-stars because it always knew its lines. <laughs> and most of the time held still. When it, when it was the animatronic, it was like a gem. It was like, he's there, here I come. You don't have to wait for other people to get ready or do touch-ups, you know, and like, you're like, boom, we're done, and someone's reading a script. <laughs> I will say I always knew my lines. <laughs> no, I know, you did, you did. It was actually much easier when we were doing scenes with the kids than when, with the ants, because they would just mess around. <laughs> I just love that you said, no offense, my other favorite co-star was the cat. <laughs> Only because it was easy. It was it's like, fine. It's fine. Waiting, you know. We're not auditioning for the same roles. <laughs> the cat can do things I can't. <laughs> We've got a question here on the left. Hi, thank you for being here. Um, my question is, when the show ended, um, where did you see the future of your characters like go in? We I don't know if it, when, when the show ended, we talked, but we talked about this recently at, a, at another um, Q&A that we had. Um, I mean, Libby's running you know, her, her daughter's PTA somewhere. She's very much in charge. She is very much organizing everything. And um, you know, just like a lot of high school mean girls, I'd like to think that she has grown up a little bit, but I'm not quite sure. I don't think about it too much just because I love the way we ended it, and I don't think you could do better than that. But um, yeah, I do think, I mean, look, the way you ended it, Sabrina and Harvey have to be together, right? Um, but like, how intrusive are the ants? Do they get their own place? I hope, oh, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. <laughs> that could get very, yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> We've got a question here on the right. Hi, massive fan of the show. I was wondering if you had any tips for an aspiring actress and a uh, teenage witch. Oh, Teenage Witch, I want to hear more about that. <laughs> um, I mean, I feel like advice is always this, you know, it's, it's hard to give advice because everybody's different. Um, but if it's a passion and it's something that you really, truly love, then I just say, you know, whatever it is that you can find, if it's, if it's um, local productions in your area or... You know, I always recommend study. You know, we, we took we acting class, dancing class, singing classes. You know, 
a craft is something that, that you can be born naturally gifted at, but you can also study and work hard and learn. And we're always learning. I think we're still learning. Every time I step onto a stage or a set, I'm always learning from everyone around me. So just it, being able to, to open yourself up to learning and being, being taught is something that, that is, um, I think, an art of itself. And being around it as much as possible because then you just feel comfortable in it too. Like my sister wants to be an actress and I keep trying to tell her, just be on set, learn to read a call sheet, um, you know, get a job behind the scenes and um, just learn about all the different angles of how, what goes into, whether it's theater or film or TV. Um, there's just a different dialogue and things that you can learn when you're, when you're just working there. Um, but my, my advice is always more of a what not to do do not give money to any agent that says they're gonna get you a job. They should get paid if you get paid. <laughs> That's my number one. 100%. Do not give money to people that are like, oh yeah, I'll make you a star, or just give me $5,000, you know, so, or quid, whatever you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, if you just like, if you, if you get a talent agent, like a lot of the time people will do headshots, get a talent agent, and, um, and they'll send you out on auditions and stuff, but you should never pay them before they get you a job. And also I would like to throw in, don't be so hard on yourself. I think as we've gotten older, we've learned the hard way. Um, I think a lot of us are far too hard on ourselves. And just having a little bit of, of faith in yourself and belief in yourself goes a long way. Confidence is contagious. And I think that if you exude confidence, people will believe it. It's the fake it till you make it. Really, exactly. Works. But but just <laughs> don't be so hard on yourself. We're all the board. we yeah. all have imposter syndrome. One one hundred percent. But I think that we're all also far too hard on ourselves. So give yourself a break. Be nice to yourself. That's great advice. Round of applause. <laughs> Spreading that positivity here in Wales. Great advice. Thank you, ladies. We've got a question here on the left. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I went on the internet a while ago, but. So they were thinking of making a series about Sabrina's teenage daughter. Is that actually a, something you're currently working on, you expect to work on? No, that was, I think someone made up a graphic and then it looked very exciting and people thought it looked, I thought it looked real. I was like, was this happening? Should I know? <laughs> yeah, I like sent it to my I mom, I never our saw producer, that. and I was like, um, is this real? I might have posted it on Instagram too, I don't remember. But it looked very real. Um, no, they did the Netflix show, The Chilling Adventures. Yeah, um, I saw that. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of, it, there's, the bureaucracy behind all of it is very complicated. Like, my mother owned the show when we filmed it, but that expired. And then when um, Archie Comics got the book, the, the rights back to the character, um, they wrote a new character, The Chilling Adventures, and then they spun that off as a TV show. And then, like, so I don't even know who owns Sabrina. I actually, it might be the Archie comics, although it could be Netflix. I don't know who owns her now. Okay, thank you. I was just, because I was wondering if once you made it in America, would it got, would it have got released in the oh, UK? Of course, but of course it would. It was, I mean, <laughs> if you're not is, making it at all, it doesn't matter. No, we didn't make it. We, <laughs> Good answer. I, you know, been th I've been saying that, like, Clarissa was something that Nickelodeon talked about bringing back, but that, that stalled out, and I don't know what's going to happen with that. That was years ago, but, um... But I don't know, because iCarly is such a huge hit again that maybe they'll think about Clarissa again. But I think Sabrina, because there's just so many people you have to go through to figure out who owns it, who will allow it, who wants to put it on, because CBS owns it, but ABC aired it, and Viacom has it, which is paramount. It's like a whole... I think at this point it would have to come, it would have to come from whoever actually owns the rights. If whoever owns the rights currently is like, I really want to reboot the original version of the show, they'd have to present it. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Great question. It's like a multiverse of Sabrina. Yeah. Interesting. We have a question over here on the right. Hi, hi guys. Thank you for coming to Wales. Um, I grew up watching Sabrina, so it's amazing to see you there. Um, my question was, I watched both versions, the Netflix version. Were you a bit annoyed because I was? You weren't on the Netflix version? No, you know, I know a lot of people think it was my choice. I think even um, Kiernan might have thought that maybe I didn't do it. They didn't ask me. Um, I wasn't annoyed. I actually was, I was happy that the show was so different, so it wasn't really, com it wasn't comparable. You know, one, yeah, one's like, totally like, different show. It was more like Buffy the Vampire Slayer than Sabrina. Sabrina, our show, I like to think that it was magic, it was a comedy, it was a family show. I think that Chilling Adventures 
was a YA, like more of a young adult. Um, it was more of a thriller, uh, and it was it was not you know meant to be a comedy by any means. Or no, it was very dark. It wasn't family. It wasn't yeah, and it was that was witchcraft. Whereas I think ours is magic. Um, so you know I think that they were very different, but. Um, the ants were on it, which made sense because I haven't actually seen the episode. But I've only seen the first one. The first one. We watched the first one. Yeah. It's weird, honestly. It's, it's weird for us to go back and watch something that is like Sabrina, but not. Yeah. So I mean, I watched the first one only because Netflix like made me. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but then uh, I didn't watch the one with the ants yet. I do want to. I just don't have the time. But um, what's interesting is like from what I understand, is that that Sabrina went into a television and was introduced to her aunts on TV. So who would I, who would I be? There's still a Sabrina. So what I should have done was direct that show. They should have had me direct that show. <laughs> that could have tied me in. There's a round of applause, very much deserved. <laughs> We've got um, a member of the Hellfire Club on our left ready to ask a question. Hi, I just wanted to say that like me and my mum grew up watching Sabrina and um, Buffy as well. Those are the only things we ever watched. So just thank you for that. Um, my question was, uh, what did you, what, what do you both like most about the characters of Libby, uh, Libby and Sabrina? Like what, what features do you like about them the most? Um, it's funny because Sabrina, like did you guys all watch Clarissa? Did anyone see Clarissa? So it was hard for me because I identified so much more with Clarissa than I ever really did with Sabrina because I always considered myself kind of a loud mouth, <laughs> um, kind of bossy and a little bit like non-conformant, like a little bit more like, um, I don't know, like willing to take on the bully and then want to kiss him. Like, it, it, like Sabrina was a little bit more timid than I was and so I had a hard time playing her a lot. But um, I understand that like, what everybody finds so relatable about her is that she just felt like she didn't fit in and she didn't know where she fit in. And it made a lot of people feel really comfortable in their own skin to see someone on television that wasn't necessarily so confident. And um, you know, she, she was trying to fix everything around her but couldn't quite handle her own power or who she was. And, um, and grasp that, and I understand that that's extremely relatable, and that that is something that really drew a lot of people in. And I hear all the time from people some amazing compliments, um, everything from, uh, you know, you comforted me while I was in the hospital. Um, you, uh, you know, your show is the reason I learned English. Your show is the reason I, you know, someone today said something about. Uh, some, someone told me that their career was spawned from Sabrina. Like I hear a lot of people, and Clarissa say, "Oh yeah, what did you? What was it?" She's a drama teacher, that's right. She became a drama teacher because of Sabrina. But like, I hear a lot from Clarissa that people became more, um, uh, fashion designers because of Clarissa. Mm -hmm. So I love hearing that stuff. I don't, I don't really know that there's anything about Libby that, that I relate to, per se, <laughs> but I will say this, um, kind of tying in with the advice I gave a little bit earlier. Um, oh, she was a confident girl and we do, I think, especially in our adolescence, we spend a lot of time being self-deprecating and being far too hard on ourselves and not having self-confidence. So I admire, even if she didn't use it in the best ways, I admire Libby's confidence. But more than anything, oh man, she was just fun to play. <laughs> you know, I mean, who, who? The villain always The is. villain is just fun. You get to go to work every day, first of all, with people that you really like and enjoy and your friends in real life. But I, I, and I could take no credit for it. I didn't write the lines. I just got to say them. But I had so deliciously. Oh, thank you. But I just had so much fun being so delightfully cruel and and, but but you know, smiling while I did it. And then we'd finish for the day and we'd go have dinner or we'd hang out and watch a movie. Oh, we went to the clubs. Come we, on. Well, I mean, <laughs> first season not as much because we were so worried about like being good and working well, and- We turned 21 at the end of the first season. Yeah, but that didn't stop us from going places. It was Los Angeles. But, you know, so she was just so much fun to play. So that's what I hold on to the most. Not necessarily emulating her character, but just loving getting to be her. Now, if you guys saw Melissa and Joey, <laughs> when I- 
So when I was developing that show, I said, I don't want to be like Sabrina. I don't want to be the one that kind of fixes everything. I want to be the one that's the hot mess and the, the tornado that comes through and just tears shit up. Sorry, guys. But, um, but yeah, so I was like, with Melissa and Joey, that's the character I relate to, the, not relate to, but had the most fun because she is such a disaster. She is such a flawed character. And I got to just be a lush and a slut and like, <laughs> just have to be like Yay. so <laughs> sassy and just. The messy ones are fun. Ridiculous. I got to be, like I got to do physical comedy more. I mean, I did in Sabrina, I got to do physical comedy, especially you did. I did the most. That, well, that was magic happening to you. Yeah, but like Pratt Falls and pretending and becoming a pies goat. in the faces and becoming all these things. <laughs> but yeah, I, it was, Melissa and Joey was just like, I got to like wear fabulous dresses and wear high heels and just, even though I hate that shit, but I got to be like kind of crazy and just ridiculous and I love that. So, speaking of clothes though, do you ever look back uh, at, you see, I know that you, I haven't really watched the show either, but you haven't watched the show, but every time I see pictures or like people love the clothes we wore on the show. No, and it was kind of weird. And I look back at it and I'm like, that's not cute. It's so, but it's not so cute. in now. It's yeah. so interesting. Like, but it was not cohesive. Like it was weird how our wardrobe, like what I wore was different. Like I think one whole season, do you, do you guys have the store BB here for a little while? B-E-B-E? No, -E -B -E? no. So it's like, it was like the store in the US for a while. It's gone now, but it was like, matching suits, like it was suit pieces. So it was like a skirt or pants and then a matching blazer. And I wore a ton of that, I think, like first or second season. I was like, what is that? That's weird. But then seventh season, I wanted to be Avril Lavigne and wear like, you know, skater clothes. And my mom, my mom producer was like, no. I wore a brown pantsuit once. Yes. <laughs> that was supposed to be cute. I mean, there were, there were, but then there were fun outfits thrown in and like some more colorful, bright, fun. But the we stockings, were never, the stockings were cool. We did not dress like teenagers. I no. dressed like I was like a, like a temp at an office. Like it was like a lot of hair clips. Things. A, a lot, lot of hair, hair clips. clips. That was the 90s though. That's the 90s. Oh my gosh. Crazy yeah. hairstyles. Yeah. Crazy hairstyles. Yeah. And it's so funny that that's now back. I'm like, how old am I that that seems like not that well, long ago? I brought my hairdresser from Clarissa to Sabrina because I wanted, I would never wear my hair the same twice. Like I always hated wear it. Now I just wear it down and like frizzy. But <laughs> I never wore, I never wanted to wear my hair the same twice. Yeah. So you'll see, I did one season where I had the ringlets and one season with the clips and uh, you know, it's just like everything. One of the group photos that we have um, from season one. So the, the, the pictures that we have that are the group photos from the first season. So that was actually, those pictures were taken before we, that was the first time we'd ever even met each other. She and I met at the auditions, but as a whole, it was the first time the cast had met. We hadn't started shooting yet. And so we all meet and they're, you know, trying to fit us for, you know, whatever they think our character is going to dress like. And it's so funny because I'm wearing these wide-legged kind of almost bell-bottomy pants and this brown kind of faux leather shirt. And I've got little braids in my hair, all this stuff. And somebody came to the table earlier and they said, well, that's exactly what everybody's wearing now. Yeah. Like 20 some odd years later, it's all back. Can we have a round of applause for these two trendsetters right here? <laughs> yes. I feel like whoever dressed Phoebe in Friends and her hairstyles had to like be a huge Sabrina fan. Oh, yeah. Think yeah. About it. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. We're just talking fashion. We're, we'll get back on track, I promise. Uh, we have a question here on the right. Hello. If uh, Sabrina has had a crossover with another TV show, which one would you prefer? Your wish. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I mean, look, I, I never got to be on Friends. So Her and Phoebe would friends, be best friends. I would love to be on Friends. I feel like I was the only actor in Hollywood that like, we didn't get to be on. Soleil got to be on Friends. But I didn't. Soleil was uh, Roxy in like the last three seasons of Sabrina. And uh, it's actually her birthday today. We got to wish her happy oh, birthday. We, yeah. But, um, yeah, but then, uh, I mean, I did, we did a lot of crossover with the other. See, in the U.S., it was on what we called TGIF. So it was on Friday nights. And we did crossover with the other shows on that night. So in the U.S., you did see one night where me and the cat went to every single show on on Friday night. Um, and we would do we would sometimes film these Friday night. Um, they, they called it like a like CBS party or something. And we would film, and they would show all of us hanging out together in between, like in the commercial breaks oh, yeah. in between the shows, yeah, which was, was wild show. as a crossover as a kid. Yeah, <laughs> we did like there was a show called Teen Angel. 
There was Boy Meets World, but I don't think I was. And that's the 70s show, I think. 70s oh, the 70s show, yeah. show. yeah. Step by step. Um, oh, I did the 70s show. Yeah. You mean I was, I was on the 70s show, but I was also in a 70s outfit when I did, I think, was it, was it Teen Angel or was it? I think it was Boy, Boy Meets World. Oh, because each, each show was in a different decade. That's what it was. Every show we jumped, Salem had eaten, a, a coughed up a hairball. I don't know. Some, you guys probably know better. <laughs> like a, was it a hairball? Time ball. Time ball. Time ball made out of hair, probably. Um, and so I jumped from decade to decade in every show. Yeah. So that was fun. I don't really remember it, though. It's funny. Like, some of those actors and I will be like, do we know each other? Yeah, well, yeah, I was, okay, that's right. I was on your show. But, like, because I was, you know, I'd have to, like, go to someone else's set after we were done with our set. I don't know if you guys remember. I was in a movie called Can't Hardly Wait. and I was in. Oh, my one. God. Can't Hardly in, Wait. I was in another movie. one. Like, all these ones where I went uncredited. I didn't want credit, and I just showed up a few nights for work. But I would have to work, like all night on the movie and come to, and actually when I was shooting Drive Me Crazy, I was shooting in Utah, filming our show in LA, recording the animated series on Monday nights, but I wouldn't sleep between Saturday and Monday night because I would have to be on set of the movie in Utah, fly back, go to rehearsal, go record the animated series, and then I'd get to go home and sleep after three days. So it was... It I'm was, tired just ugh. hearing the story. It was like three months. I think I worked 51 days straight without a day off, and then I think I worked, like, I, and I had... Two, two nights a week I wouldn't sleep. But thank God I was like 22, I could do it. I would never do that now. <laughs> if you guys missed Drive Me Crazy with Adrian Grenier, am I saying that correctly? What a movie, that's your homework tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We have it's, a, it's a true okay. 90s, it's, like, yeah. if you like buy, Can't Buy Me Love, it was a lot like Can't Buy Me Love. It is like Can't Buy Me Love, one of my favorites, p -dumps. We have time for two more questions only. We're gonna go to the microphone on the left, please. Hi, um, I just wanted to ask whether, I know you guys said you've not actually watched the show, but did you have a favorite episode that you remember filming or any like good memories from filming? Well, it was funny, we said on the way here, we were like, you know, we really need to watch the show. I have a podcast called What Women Binge, and I know some of you have seen it um, or have listened to it. You can watch it on YouTube or you can get it anywhere you get a podcast. But um, so we've had like my mom on to talk about the episode. We've had Nate, um, who plays Harvey. We've had Caroline Ray and Hilda on. Okay, and Jeanette, well then I, I, I have. You're coming, so. you're coming. But I think what we might do is do a watch show, an episode where we watch it. But yeah. I think, because we were saying this morning at breakfast, we were like, we need to watch our show so we have some new answers for all you guys the next time when we come to Liverpool or Edinburgh. I know. We go. Um, but I, my favorite episode was Pancake. Like, Pancake episode I loved because I got to be physical, I feel like, for the first time. I think the comedy really snapped for me in that one, and I really enjoyed that one. Um, I, I agree with her. I think that we do need to refresh our own memories because sometimes when you're working on something, because you're getting a new script every week and you're immediately, you, you almost forget what happened the week before and you just move on to the next one. So there's so much stuff that people will remind us of. It will literally be like, what episode? Wait, did I did that? I, I don't remember doing that. We yeah. did that. I met that person. But, but you we also don't... forget who you, like if you worked with, like I forgot I tap danced with Dick Van Dyke because... Yeah. I think I must have, I had to th rethink it and see pictures. Yeah. And I was like, I think I was so nervous about the tap dancing, I forgot about the person. Like, you know, I didn't want to screw up. I knew he was only good. He walked in. I'm sure we said, hi, nice to meet you. Okay, here we go. And like rehearsed it a few times, shot it a few times, and he left. So it did not stand out in my memory, probably because it was fearful to me, and I shut it down. But we couldn't watch it. We were working yeah, on Friday. Yeah, we were always working. But I, I do have two episodes that will forever, I will always remember them and they are my favorites so I can confidently say the first one is geek like me yeah. um, where Libby becomes a geek for a minute and I suppose the second one also has a theme um, I can't remember what the name of the episode was maybe it was it called when teens collide it was when you and I we bumped into each other and we switched personalities so she became that's when you told me <laughs> that's when you told me that I always hold my hands in front of my, you were watching me. Oh, I think, oh, I didn't even remember yeah. doing that, but. You said I, I always do this. I always have my hands in front of me. And okay. I, like, I did, I still do that. Well, of course, because probably at that time it was very important. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, we're going to do an episode it. where I have to, I have to be Melissa and she has to be me. So I probably spent the whole week before like very closely watching her mannerisms. But I just, I think. I think both of those episodes stand out to me. Well, Geek Like Me because it had so much physical comedy and it was fun, but When Teens Collide because, you know, when you do something for a very long time and you're playing the same role and all of a sudden you get to step out of it for a week and do something that's kind of different, it, 
it was really I, fun. I remember mostly like the costumes. Like I was in a Cinderella costume flying over a volcano and I remember the rig they had to put on me, how uncomfortable that was. I remember the trapeze one where they had a rope around my waist and said that that would catch me if I fell, but I didn't really want to hang by my waist if I fell. We were like, I was way up high. There was a Matrix one where I was fighting with, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. what was his name? Not Coolio. It was, um, he was a rapper at the time, but we were like doing this like Matrix type fight and my mom freaked out because the cables were getting wrapped around the, um, the cables that were holding me up were getting wrapped around the electrical and she was afraid I was gonna be electrocuted. So she like made my stunt, we got in a huge fight. Because I was like, I want to do my own stunts. And she's like, no, I'm not going to let you die in front of me. And I was like, I want to die in front of you. No, I, you know, <laughs> it became a whole thing. Not everyone can say that they were Cinderella flying over a volcano. I know, it's I know. A fun and memory. actually, like what I remember is like when I was my evil twin, spoiler alert, every Spellman <laughs> has a twin. <laughs> and, um, and we had to shoot an episode in front of a volcano. And I think I had to throw my twin in the volcano. I don't, I'm sure you guys know better than I do. You know what it's like when you throw your twin in a well, volcano? Yeah, you know? you know what that's like. Yeah. So I was standing up there, but I had the flu that day and I was vomiting profusely. And we were outside in the LA heat and I'm standing in a parking lot on top of a volcano. And I turned to Phil Rose, our key grip, who's like, you know, the biggest, strongest guy on the set. And I was like, please, will you stand right there and catch me if I pass out? Because I was so afraid from the heat and I was sweating and I was dehydrated and I was like, constantly vomiting and I stood up there and, Fun. and had to play myself twice so I had to do double the work that episode and then there was one with Ed Begley Jr. playing my teacher and I was vomiting for that one so I remember like the I remember the day my boyfriend broke up with me and I was directing the episode of Hilda getting married and I actually I broke up with him and it was like an all-night fight so like I didn't sleep that night and I went to set and I was in really bad mood obviously and like I remember the day my dog disappeared we were shooting um, Sabrina Goes to Rome and my dog had, um, my dog had, do we thought he was, d we thought she was dead because our dog sitter's calling us, but I'm in front of the Coliseum shooting a scene, like getting a phone call about my dog. So I remember like the, the things in my life that were going on when things happened, but I don't remember like the cohesive stories. That makes sense. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. We're going to do one final question on this microphone on the right. Um, so I've grown up watching Clarissa, then Sabrina, and then Melissa and Joey. Um, similar ages, so really get the characters. But I just wondered which of the characters that you've both played would you most have you most enjoyed? I suppose not even relate to, just enjoyed playing. Um, I think mine would have to be Mel from Melissa and Joey, or also if you guys ever saw Holiday in Handcuffs, where I played Trudy, who I can't believe I remember her name, um, with Mario Lopez. Um, I kidnap him and drag him home to pretend to be my boyfriend for Christmas. That was fun. Um, I was in this crazy wig, I got to be ridiculous, and, but that came before Melissa and Joey, and then I got five years on Melissa and Joey of just being an absolute disaster, which was just, it was just a dream. I actually, that's probably the only character, it was the only show I ever knew was ending. Sabrina, Clarissa, I never knew for sure if they were ending. We always assumed every season this could be the end, but in some cases we knew they were coming back. So when Sabrina ended, we didn't know it was ending. For sure, we didn't know, we, we guessed that it was. So I didn't mourn that so much, and I was ready to move on with my life. I was getting married and, and that kind of thing. So with Melissa and Joey, we found out it was ending, and I like was so upset, and for weeks I cried, and like people would say things to me, like they would quote like um, Dr. Seuss or something like, you know, don't, or maybe it was Winnie the Pooh, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened, and I just like more. I was like, I'm never gonna get to play her again, and I just got so upset about leaving that show, even though it, it was. I was ready to move on in my personal life. I loved that job. Um, I mean, I've, I've gotten to do some really fun things. Um, I've loved lots of things about, about all of them. I think if I had to pick a favorite experience though, I'm gonna jump to the theater world because I got to play Alphaba in Wicked. And that's a really cool experience. Hardest thing I've ever done in my life, but just getting to, you know, for forever in history, getting to say, I played Alphaba. Um, I, I, it was years ago, I probably still have green somewhere coming out of my ears or nose or something, but um, it was a really, really amazing experience. That will be pretty hard to top. Maybe that's why I haven't done much theater since. Well, we so appreciate you guys and your candor and, of course, all that you've done for making memories for everyone here in Wales and around the world with Sabrina the Teenage Witch and wishing you continued success. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to Jenna and Melissa, the cast of Sabrina the Teenage Witch.
Oh, and they're gonna tap dance, yes. Yeah. We, didn't bring a, we didn't bring a camera out so that we could take a picture with the audience. Oh, yes. Yeah. We didn't bring uh, we, we, We'd love to get a little selfie with you guys. Yes. That's all right. Everyone looks but selfie we need a, time. We need uh, one of our phones. You said we had a oh, tap dance. Yes, I did tell them we had a tap dance at the I end. One, and they actually took me up on it. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Performance here in Wales, an exclusive.